start recording and we are off all right well we're live so this is how we're going to start things hello everybody and welcome to another edition of abolitionist abstractions as always we're covered by bipcot new government license which allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof you can find out more information about this at bipcot.org so we're doing something a little different tonight uh, we're actually broadcasting this live, or attempting to. This may be the last time we try this, depending on how it <laughs> turns out. Uh, but I have, I have with me today, tonight, my uh, my friend Andrew Marich, who might be better known to a lot of people as Bodhi Agora, and we are currently live on D Live, which is a platform connected to the St- connected to Steemit that both of us have been on uh, pretty heavily recently. We both uh, really started shifting our content over there and uh we like it a lot so it's a better platform uh and you make basically money from sharing your friend's stuff voting on your friend's stuff and talking and everything you do on facebook that's absolutely useless and makes everybody else money it you get to do it for yourself and your friends it's awesome yeah exactly you know so go, go sign up for steam it and you can access all the other platform uh tools Yes, they, you know, I, I've talked about this a little bit before. I, you know, I, I was a huge uh, poo pooer of Steam it for a very long time. I remember that. I and, remember that yep. uh, you interviewed um, Jeff Berwick, right? Yep, <laughs> yep you were there. <laughs> you guys, I remember Dave like leaving the room. He's like, "Oh, you can just wait there." And yeah, I, I had like a little chat with him. I was like, "Hey, how's it going?" Because I had no idea who Jeff Berwick was. You were you were much better <laughs> off that way. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having a regular old conversation with him. like, yeah, that's cool. And then I like look him up after him like, oh, he's worth a lot of money. Well, he claims to be worth a lot of money at least. Claims to be. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, I, I, I was anti steam for a long time. And then for exactly what Bodhi was just describing, I finally realized that, well, it's been a year and a half. The platform isn't going away. It's getting bigger and stronger. Now they're adding all these. Essentially, what they're doing is adding side chains to the Steemit blockchain, which has now created things like D Live, which we're on right now, uh, yep. D Sound, which is which is was designed to uh, compete with cl- uh, was uh, was it, what's that? SoundCloud. That's I was about to say uh, Cloud Sound. I'm like that's not right. Uh, compete with SoundCloud. <laughs> there's D Tube, which is designed to compete with YouTube. Um, and, uh, then there's D mania, which is actually, I, I guess it's actually a co- kind of a competition for like, was it Imgur? In- Imgur? Yeah. yeah. Because it's basically just uh gifts and, and memes and stuff like that. Yep. And, you know, just like you said, man, it's, I, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of podcasts and I, I, I make a lot of memes and I'm trying to get back into writing again. And I put all this stuff out for free on Facebook and I've been doing so for years and yeah, why the heck wouldn't I take an opportunity to try to make some money off of it? Right. You know, at- well, the only way I've actually made money doing content and stuff was, was selling t-shirts. And with the way the Facebook alger- algorithm changes, the way I put content on my page and try and share it, it, my views have gone completely down. So I either have to share it on my personal page and then it's kind of hit or miss. So I'm finding it a lot more profitable to be doing putting my content on on the Steemit blockchain. Yeah, me too. You know, like like I said, I I mean either way I was going to keep putting this stuff out on other social media platforms anyway. Yeah. And you know, most of my posts, you know, I'm just, I've only been there a month and a half. I mean, I have I have managed to g- gain a little bit of a following already, but I think it's cuz some of the other services I've been using have helped me out with that to kind of gain followers. But, you know, even the even if it's a couple of bucks, that's a couple of bucks I didn't have before number one and yep. even more even more importantly to me i think is is actually you know because the money's nice obviously but for me i think it's more of the uh just having some place where we can put our content that we don't have to worry about it being taken down yep. by you know like youtube demonetizing and then just ripping people off of their platform the and, fact that i can say fuck and not lose my ad revenue. yeah yeah that, that's nice yeah, it is very nice, and <laughs> and, he, and even for me, uh, kind of selfishly, I've not now that I'm on DTube and stuff, I've started in, I've started adding uh, you know music into my shows where I would have never been able to get away with that on YouTube before because it would be taken down for copyright. And I'm just like, I'm not trying to make money off the song. I just really dig the song. Like I used Peace Frog in one of my last shows, and I'm like, hey man, I dig the song. You know what? Now I can put it up there, and I don't have to worry about it being teared down. So it's good stuff. But anyway, so, that's why so, we're here. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna admit I I I don't know what this show is about really. No, oh, that's okay, man. We're uh. I just heard we should do a show, and I was like, okay. Yeah, well, I yeah I wanted to do a show with you specifically because uh I I, I threw this out in the Telegram group that we're that we're in, well your group actually, uh yesterday because I. I've been trying to do a show a week lately and I didn't have anything lined up this week and I was just going to do a conversation on, you know, the, the recent school shooting, the gun debate, whatever, yep. uh, just kind of have, you know, my feelings on it. And then you wrote a piece a couple days ago, I guess it was three days ago now that went up on steam it that I found really interesting because it really, you, you, you know, you were basically saying that, well, there's two sides to this debate, or at least it appears that there's two sides of the debate and they're both fucking wrong. <laughs> and that right away piqued my interest and you know i started reading through it and i was like you know what man the boy's got a, the, the boy's got a point maybe uh maybe there is more to this because i immediately after you know if, 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 so i don't bury the lead any further for anybody who who <laughs> hasn't been following along we're talking about the recent school shooting in florida a few days ago um, yep. Maybe even almost a week. Oh, it was it. What's today? Wednesday. Almost a week ago at this point, right? It was last Friday or something like that. Whenever <laughs> it was, there 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 was a shooting recently that you know has got all the people up in arms again. You have the people in the gun control crowd trotting out all their old tired lines and claiming you know that uh, you know we just to save one children's life and and all that stuff, which I used to just look at them and say, well, they have no point whatsoever. I'm not even going to listen to them. Because right. I, I was, you know, I'm big on self-defense. I'm big on, I'm big on having my own weaponry. <laughs> they, have, they even have the kids trained to come out and start talking. Uh, they're talking about gun control. They're going on these protests. They're abstaining from going to school. And you know, to be honest with you, I find all of that absolutely fantastic. Just their message is horribly, horribly wrong. The <laughs> fact that they can band together and they're using their resources and they're using social media to affect change that they believe in congratulations guys that's fantastic that is a, you know but when now you're totally ruining it by going to the government and saying you need to pass a law yeah that's it's like, no you're <laughs> supposed to use that to reach out to each other and prevent people from reaching the point where they get so desperate that they go on a rampage yeah well uh, they're, they're still young they haven't they haven't learned yet they haven't been beaten down by government enough to, to realize how uh, how things actually work uh, but yeah, so so you have those people on one side of the debate. Like I said, I used to not pay them any attention because I I considered myself on the right, a you know Second Amendment guy, all that stuff. And you know, the more the more times things like this happen, and if I actually t take a step back and 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 look at things from a more objective standpoint, I realize that a lot of the people on the right are just as dumb. And they're making arguments. And that's like I said, that's why when I read your piece, I was like, holy crap, man, this really crystallizes a lot for me because it's true. Like my initial reaction to the shooting was, well, what do I do? I, ma I make podcasts and I make memes. So I made a meme about it, you know, and it was one of those. It was a flip, you know, a flippant one that basically saying, you know, the problem is the, the gun, the gun free uh, zones in the schools and everywhere else. And while this while it is true that. Almost all of these types of events occur in places that are considered gun-free zones, which have been set up by the government, While whether it's the federal, local, state, or whatever in that situation. Th th that is true. Th this is the case. Th there's really no denying that. Right. I, don't, I don't even – I can't even find too many – I don't even want to. Say, I was about to say leftist, and I'm trying, really trying to get away from saying st stuff like that because I think it just it doesn't help. Um, but the people on, on the on the gun control side, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, you don't even hear them bringing that up because even they know it's tr like they can't avoid that. It's right. true. But like I said, I, I just fired that meme off flippantly without even thinking about it. And then after reading your piece, I thought about it for a little while, and I was like, <laughs> you know what? Maybe that wasn't the best reaction for me. I mean, sure, it was it was a positive reaction for like you know the our Facebook the Seize Liberty Facebook page. It, it got a lot of likes, got a lot of shares. You know, one of our biggest memes in a while. Great, yeah, woo. But overall, what did it what did it do? It, it's just me adding to the other side, which isn't solving the problem. And that's why I liked what you were writing, because you were you were actually trying to get after solving the problem, not passing a law for this, not taking away a law for that, but actually solving the problem. Yeah. And what, well, the, the, how it even came about was I said that I was looking at all the, the gun statistics and all of these things. I was like, yeah, this is obvious. This is obvious totally blowing gun control out of the water. And then I saw, I think Merca Today 
posting the meme that said Honduras banned guns. They have the highest murder per capita. And then Switzerland requires gun ownership and they have the lowest murder per capita. And I was like, that is an outrageous claim. Hold on. Let me look it up. Yeah. And both of those or all three or four of whatever claims those were, were just false. And everyone's like, yeah, we need guns in schools and this and that. And I'm just like, that's that doesn't even make sense. One well, Switzerland, you, you basically you have people on the pro gun side supporting mandatory military service. Because <laughs> well, yeah, that's that, that's why everybody <laughs> in Switzerland has a gun. That's what Switzerland is, and the ammo is highly controlled. Well, that's what I was because I I, cause so, I, I haven't looked at that in a while. I I would just just let me interject for a second because I haven't looked at that in a while, but I was pretty sure not, since you looked into this recently, you you probably would know more. That is the case, right? Like they ha- they all have guns, but they're not allowed to keep them loaded at their house, right? Isn't it right. something like the the either the weapons or the or the or the ammo is ha- held somewhere else in a rep- in a repository, right? Yep. So people making that claim are, are you, exactly they're they're saying it, and again, that's something a couple of years ago. I just would have shared that without even thinking because it makes sense because it confirms my biases. Yep, and that's why I appreciate the fact that you actually dug into that because I probably wouldn't. I mean, I don't share as many of those these days, but I may have without even thinking about it. But like, I've it, had a, I've had a beef with the Three Thought Project uh, for a long time and America today. Oh, Just poor Johnny. <laughs> they, they do not fact check. They find a meme that confirms their bias. They find a cop story that confirms their bias. They find this, they find, and they share it without looking into it. And what happens is, yeah, they gain a lot of followers, but they also lose a lot. So I don't, I don't even know what they're. Basically, they're they're not being very effective in in actually changing people's minds or driving a, a productive conversation yeah and I, that's what bothers me because i, I want to see actual conversations i want to see people talking about the root cause and and what we as individuals can do about it yeah and we're, we're in such an information age it's so easy it took me a three minute google search just to look it up and see it <laughs> and, yeah and, and the best thing, too, is a lot of people um, cry about Snopes being funded by interest groups and, and being false news. And kind of they've had a couple stories that were extremely biased. But if you notice about Snopes, they actually provide links to the original content that they're actually getting their information from. So you can actually still go to Snopes, use them as an aggregate, and then actually go check out the details yourself and see whether or not the stories line up. Like you can actually fact check Snopes and just yeah, that, well, that's well, that would be I, the I intelligent thing to do, <laughs> right? Because if it is something that's bullshit, I'm not just gonna blatantly share it. That, that's the other thing too with all these um, the memes about what's his name, um, Hogs or Do- what's his oh name? Dave David Hog ha- ha- Hog or Hag or something like Hog I think yeah something like that. There was a oh, how is he in California six months before the shooting and now he's in Florida. It's like y- you can travel to a different state in like a day. <laughs> he he, he, he might have been able to walk close to that in six months. Who knows, man? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, he's a crisis actor because he took a YouTube video that went viral. Yeah. Well, that... what? Like the kid has an interest in uh, media. And he wants to be an actor. He wants to do news reporting. Uh, he had pictures taken at CNN because he went on the CNN tour. I've gone on the CNN tour. I have pictures of me at CNN. Yeah, I've. <laughs> that's so funny, man. Because I saw that. And I I thought it was. So, I didn't read. I didn't follow up on that. But I saw those pictures, the ones you're talking about, and that's what I assumed it was. Because I've never personally been a one, but I know other people who have. And yeah, you get to sit in the chair, and they get the, they take the picture, so it looks like you're behind. You're an anchor on TV with the big with the you know with the with the green screen all lit up with the stuff behind you, so it looks all official and stuff like that. And yeah, people are just pulling that out and going, "See, here's our evidence." Because why? Well, they want to confirm their bias, but it's 
I mean, all, all of these things I think are, are, are connected to, well, it's funny. We, we were, we actually had a, a mini conversation about this earlier today about, you know, when you, when you shared something about some idiot who was being completely illogical and you're yeah. some, you're somebody who takes a crap on logic a lot of times, <laughs> uh, but when you have to point it out, but that's really what it is. It's yeah. so many of these people on both sides of, of it's, I, I hate to even call it a debate because it's not a debate. It's just people it's talking not, at it. It's, it's people screaming at each other. It's a shit fest. Yeah. Yeah. But for lack of a better term, like on either side of this thing, there there isn't because either you have the people who, for whatever reason, whether they consider themselves Second Amendment supporters or, or whether they just like self-defense or whatever, they've decided that, you know, the government's horrible, which I agree with. But that means everything the government says is a lie and everything is and everything they do is wrong. And it's like. Okay, no, right. no, wait, but that's like logic one hundred and one. No, 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 that, that that that's not right. That's that's what is it? It's not the division fall, the composition division fallacy. It's one of the fallacies. It's one of the standard, uh, log, uh, like uh, informal logical fallacies to negate something just because one part of it is proven to be just true. It doesn't mean necessarily the whole the whole is the whole is wrong. Yeah, um, it's basically guilt by association. Yeah, in, in a way. Yeah. Uh, that too. But even the government tells truths, even the government tells lies, even you tell truths and lies. This is just a part of human nature. If all the government said was always a lie, now you've set yourself up to be manipulated because now they can say in the negative of what they want you to believe. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just be, yeah, exactly. No. Smoking's good for you. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm, least... a I'm not going to smoke. Exactly. Like what? People don't think. Uh, it, it, same goes with any kind of scientific studies or something that comes out of the CDC. Like the, the CDC says it's don't drink chlorine, don't drink bleach. How dare they? Is that a lie? It must be. <laughs> no, it's still a really bad idea to drink bleach. But it, I just can't wrap my head around it. People want to confirm their bias they don't want to have an honest conversation they really don't no. they just want to feel like they're the ones that are right and like i i still get people posting on on some of my either memes or articles or whatever i'm doing and they'll basically reiterate everything i said but they're saying it in a tone that disagrees with me they're like well no actually it's this and it's like did did you actually watch it <laughs> Did you get tricked by the title? Is that what happened? Well, that's like, that that's that that unfortunately is probably more often the case than not because I mean there there I mean you mentioned the the free thought project before which this actually kind of ties into which I have mixed feelings about unfortunately because I am still friends with a couple of the writers there and they're, they're you know they're really great people and I know they're just trying to you know earn a living but I got turned off by them for a lot of the same reasons you were mentioning actually for me it was mostly the ads that were driving me even, even like they were getting past my ad blockers and it was just driving me insane it's like I can't even look at these things it's just so that's why I'm so happy because one of my favorite authors from there is my friend John Vibes. And that's yeah. why I was so happy when he switched to Steam it and started putting his articles. He started ripping them off of the three free thought project and putting the article itself, like just putting the text of the article on Steam it. So I'm like, I can read it without ads. I'm like, now I read your articles every day, man. This is great. Yeah, it's a smart idea for everyone that's upset with their platforms or ad problems. Or yeah, Steam it is fantastic. Yeah. It's much more quality. Yeah. But th there was another point I was driving at with that. Now I kind of lost it. But uh, uh, I think the titles. I'd oh yeah, the the, the titles. The, so, but yeah, but that's that's what it was. That like the one thing they're really good at, and a lot of websites are now these days, is with clickbait titles because that's yeah. how you bring people in. And you know you can't really avoid it. I mean, I do it myself sometimes. I mean, for the most part, when I title different podcasts that I do and stuff like that, unless I have a very focused idea at the beginning, unless I have a plan laid out that this is what we're going to talk about, yada, 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 I usually just pull it from a random quote during the show. Like somebody will say something and it'll make me laugh and I'll go, that's it. I write it down. I'm like that's going to be the show title. But more often than not, even for like little videos people put out, you can't help but f like... I don't even necessarily think it's a horrible thing to use it. Like I used to think, oh, clickbait's horrible. It's like, ah, it has its place to a certain extent. Like if you want to draw people in, but most people are extremely susceptible to that and they don't. Like they don't, you can just tell by reading the comments on pretty much any social media platform, even Steam. It. Well, actually I've noticed a lot more people on Steam it do pay a little more attention, but I still catch random comments here or there too that the people clearly didn't watch it because they're arguing up, either arguing a point that you never made 
Yeah. Um, or like you said, reiterate, re- actually reiterating what you said in a different, you know, different, uh, in a different, uh, way and going, Oh, well, it's not, it's like, dude, we're actually on the same page. Do you have like, any clue what's going on here? You know, like people like I, I, I've, I, I've had people in my past like that, that used to drive me insane. Like they would literally like anything I said, they would, it, they just had to argue with me, even if they were agreeing with me. Yep. And it's like, they would just, they're yeah. like, they would start off by saying, like their first word out of their mouth had to be no and then they would say something almost exactly what i said and i'm like what world am i living in did i not just say this <laughs> like should that be a yes yeah should you start with yes and or even yes but but just start with no it's like no that's a bad place to start but yeah most people are like that unfortunately most people whether you know whether they legitimately don't have time or they just claim they don't have time people skim headlines and it's so much easier to confirm your bias than it is to actually challenge that bias you know and i i i say that with like kind of authority now cuz i i you know this was me only a couple of years ago it's taken me it's taken me a long time to break myself out of these habits and i still i still do it i still slip into it but i try to be a lot more conscious of it and i try i try to examine things from more angles i mean sure i'll still go for a quick jab every once in a while with a meme if there's something topical going on and i just want to jump in like i may pop in with something like that without really thinking about it or i may fire off like a one or two line tweet or something like that without putting too much thought into it but for the most part i i try to like any situation, whether it's the the shooting that we were talking about or anything or whatever the whatever the topic is, I try my best to take a step back first and go, okay, why does this side think this? Why does this side think this? Including my own side, like why do why do I think this? Do I why? think this because I believe it's actually true, or it's like just it makes me feel good because it seems like it's true, which makes me happy because it makes you know it confirms other biases I have, and then I can just put it put it to the side and go, oh, now I can and now I have much a lot more time for other more important things and go focus on them instead. Yep, you know that's the way most people live. You know, yeah, that's the way. I mean, uh, I think Tyagananda has found a way around this. He's been using um, was it Busy dot org? Oh yes, yes, our, he our takes friend the Tyagananda. actual content of whatever it is he wanted to post and he just puts that all in the title. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I noticed that he's like oh, oh I, I noticed him doing like a couple of weeks ago. All of a sudden I saw, oh, there's a new post. I'm like, let me go see what it is. And it's just this really long I'm like it's a really long Jack title and like, no body. Wait a minute. I'm very confused. Like he put a quote in there one day. I'm like, well that's new. <laughs> <laughs> so but, that just totally prevents it from happening. Yeah, but it's it's it that's one of the things you kind of have to do sometimes, you know? That's pretty clever. So it is. Ty, I think Ty's watching. So I I hope so. Watching you, Ty. We're watching. <laughs> We're learning. Yeah, but but yeah, but no. Like I said, I mean that that is. I I call it the Twitter and meme generation all the time. But that is that's people's mindset. Everybody just they, even though we live in the information age where it should be quite easy for most of the world, because even in what the so-called third third world countries. A good portion of the world, at the very least, has a cell phone by this point. Like that's been proven. Like the research on that is pretty astounding. Like I think it, I, I could swear the last time I heard it, it was nearing somewhere like seventy five percent of the world's yeah. population at least had a cell phone. At least had some kind of connection to the internet. I mean, you know? if I run if I run an ad for my business, uh, basically ninety percent of the hits is on mobile. Yeah. It's- that's just how people check Facebook. Um, sure. And most people don't even have desktops anymore. It's like it's basically just gamers or, or people with workstations yeah. that would ever use a desktop for it. So then really your mobile's the go-to. Or if people are at work, and what do they do? They check on their phone while they're at work. They're not going to open the business machine and have you know Facebook sure. open. <laughs> yeah, most employers tend to frown on that, I've learned. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, that that did a number on me once. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I eventually went to go work for myself because I was like, oh, now I can sit and play on Facebook all day. Nobody can yell at me except me. Um, but yeah, no, you're you're right though. That 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 is how most people access it. So that's what I was saying is, despite the fact that we're in this information age, most people don't take advantage of it, and that's why we see these cycles every time there's one of these events. You know, like in the, in this particular in this particular topic, the whole the whole thing centered around guns and the gun control debate or whatever you want to call it. You know, this this has happened 
unfortunately, it, it on some levels, it does seem like it's happening a lot more frequently. Although I went, you know, talking before about people running with their different with the different narratives without really checking into it and, you know, fire and just uh, sharing memes and, and headlines without really paying attention or actually looking into it. You know, it's the same thing on both sides because the numbers that get thrown out for the, like the amount of school shoot, the, the amount of school shootings, for example, that, that, that was getting, that was getting thrown around a lot. And it's like, and so many people just quickly look how many, of course it's increasing. It's, it's getting worse. Look how many of these are. It's like, well, hold up, hold up. Did you actually look inside the numbers? Because if you actually do follow the links on stuff like that, you come to find that what they classify as a school shooting is anybody who was shot basically in a very close vicinity to a school, yeah, including like people. A 300 yard radius from yeah, the school. Inc- but, but also <laughs> including people who attempted or committed suicide. Those are actually committed, considered school shootings because, unfortunately, there was just one only a couple of days after this, or maybe it was even yesterday. There was a, there was a, there was one that got in the paper right away that this school, yeah, it was yesterday. There was a school, I can't remember what state it was in, but it was on lockdown. It was a middle school because oh. because a, a, a student had shot themselves. But they actually all the headlines. Another school shooting, another school shooting, and people just pick that up and say, "Oh my God, it's another one." We we have to do something. Something must be done because look at it. Look at the numbers. All right, and now you have all these uh, gun owners guilt or guilty guilty gun owners going out and destroying their firearms. Have you seen that video yet? I, I saw I, I saw the aftermath of one of them. It looked like somebody had cut that. It must use they must use a sawzall or something because it was cut. Like was there was an AR cut into like four or five pieces. I saw on it laying on somebody's There's table. There's one that's even worse. On a live stream, he cut the barrel down on his AR. He basically made he basically committed a felony on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> that rifle is still fully functioning. You moron. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That serves him right. I hope. Uh, I just why? Yeah, I I never want the state to rain down on anybody, but somebody like that, eh, maybe you know, I'll make an exception. He kind of deserves it. <laughs> like, man, your gun's not gonna kill anybody. Like, if if you're a responsible gun owner, your gun's not really gonna kill anybody, ever, unless it's in a self defense situation, and then that's not really murder anymore. Yeah. Exactly. But, it all depends on your definitions. The, they make the the let's say the gun control side make that definition as wide as possible, and the pro gun side make that as small as possible. Yeah, of course. But but the problem is is both of these are stuck with this margin. They're not actually they're they're approaching zero at some point in their minds, but either of their methods aren't gonna reach it. Like. Just how people want armed teachers in the classroom and all this. If you think back to some of your dickhead teachers in school, would you really want one of them armed? I There's a very good chance I would have been shot multiple times. Right. <laughs> so it, I pissed it, off a lot of teachers in my day. I don't think it's really a solution. Um, well, I, it, it could. It could potentially work. But yeah, it, that's, that's not what I was say. all the teachers are going to want to be armed. Not... You have to. You're gonna have to go through strict testing and training and all that. And if it's gonna go into public schools, you just increase the cost of. You just raise taxes by a shit ton. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> if, if, if things worked the way they were supposed to, then no, you wouldn't actually have to. That that could be allocated for. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And I, I, I again, I'm somebody who used to make that argument, and I, I now see that it's not. You know. Do I think it could be part of a solution? Yes. Yeah. But I no longer think I, I don't think it carries the weight that I I used to throw it or throw around with it. And I see still so many people still doing it. Like I said, even with the flippant meme I threw off the it's threw off the day. Yes, I do I actually do recognize that just removing the gun free zones doesn't actually solve the problem. It can no. go it can go in the direction of solving the problem. It can help it can help minimize it, but yeah. if some really determined yeah no law no amount of self-defense there's always the element of surprise there's always i mean uh, yeah it's it, i mean it, it cuts down for for anybody and there have been there of, of some of the the 
the actual mass shootings because that's actually something else. Uh, when we're t- even, even the, uh, the Texas church or whatever, where a guy went home, picked up his AR, and shot the guy in the stomach, chased him. Yeah. 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 No. That, the, yeah. But no. Know? Yeah. Those like. But I was saying that there are some people who actually like. It's kind of been proven more or less that they specifically went to a place because like. That's always the claim from the right. It's like, well, of course they went there. Like, and again, I used to make this claim without thinking about it. Of course they went there. They know it's a gun free. Well, you know what? That doesn't actually run through everybody's mind. Like the guy in the guy in the Aurora, the the Aurora uh, movie theater shooting, whatever that guy, the guy with the crazy red hair, whatever the heck his name was. Like, I think at this point, it's been pretty much as, as close to being definitively proven as it can be without an actual admission that you know is truthful from this guy, because like the patterns he followed the the fact that there was uh like i think there's something like ridiculous like 10 or 11 movie theaters closer to him than the one he ended up going to and the one he ended up going to was one of the only ones in that area that had a gun free zone set up in it by the by the by the owner of the movie theater which was a private by a private uh, you know private entity who made a decision on his private property which i have no problem with if that's yeah. what they choose to do um, but like so in a situation like that yeah it's kind of hard to say that he wasn't aiming for a specific target but in a lot of these other ones, you know, like the, I, we still haven't got the full facts about about this kid the, in the most recent one. But yeah. you know, the things that have come out seem to be a lot of the other things. You know, he 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 was he was he was pissed off. He he had a grudge, uh, you know, for whatever he had happened to him in the past and stuff like that. And he held on to that. So to me, so, somebody who has that set in their mind already, like this is what I'm going to do. This the, this is how I, either I, either how I'm going to go out or how I'm going to get famous or whatever it is. Like once you make that decision, the 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 fact of where it's happening has to necessarily slide down the priority list because you're just so focused on that that you're obviously not a stable individual. Right. So I really have a hard I nowadays I have a much harder time just automatically assuming that every one of these people aimed for these places because they were a gun free zone. That's why I say not where I used to say it's the solution. Now I say, ah, eh, it could be part of the solution. Right. It could be part of the solution. Uh, there's gonna be it's gonna be a multi part solution because it's a multi part problem. I mean, we you would still run into situations where the person ready to commit a mass murder, um, already has decided that they're going to die. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. They just don't care. I mean, look, what was it? Um, was it in Arizona, that bank shooting, where the guys had, like, uh, drums on their AKs, and they just went all out. They had body armor. They knew they were going to be shot at. Yeah. They, to a bank. Banks are banks. sometimes have armed guards and all this. They were They were prepared for it. Yep. Yeah, and none of it was legally acquired. So, what, like, no amount of law, no amount of preparation, no amount of armed, whatever, it's still gonna happen. I mean, yeah. Well, that's I, why that's why we gotta that like you know like we were saying this to start with this. That's why you really gotta get down to what like you need to figure out the causes of this. And despite what the gun control advocates would have you believe the cause is not the guns themselves because they are just a tool. Um, even, even in a perfect world, eliminate all the guns from America, much like, uh, China's done a very good job making it very difficult. But what do you still have? Mass Factories stabbings and mass stabbings because people are pushed to the absolute brink of sanity. I mean, he killed 27 people with a knife. Yeah, that's that that was crazy that story. Like holy shit. That that that's a that's a whole lot of rage. I mean, whether it's whether it's internal rage that's now being forced outwards or just rage at certain people or whatever. Like that's a whole to be able to do that. You know, now of course uh, the a lot of the gun the the gun the, you know the pro gun people that I know uh, would smugly look at that and some of them I know actually have and right away go well see if people were armed they he wouldn't have been able to get away with that it's like yeah again yeah. all right could it have could it have made the situation end quicker yes but it it wouldn't have stopped it from happening you know no, because so you, you, one it takes a while for it to register two you have to know who's doing it Three, like yeah people don't realize how chaotic. And that was on a sub. Wasn't that on? A, was that on, that was on, was that on a subway or was it in the subway platform or something? I think that one. I don't remember uh, the full story on that, but I think it might have been a train station or something like that. Yeah. It's already a confined space. 
Like if you go to New York City and you're standing on the platform, and if you just imagine someone going ham, full ham with with a knife or a sword or something, yeah, they're gonna get through a lot of people before you even know what the hell is going on. Yeah, because they're not even gonna they're not even gonna have to get all of them. Unfortunately, in a situation like that, all it takes is running through the crowd and freaking people out, and bu- and a bunch of people start jumping backwards and falling under the tracks themselves, and end up getting you know, there's gonna be a whole lot of mayhem before anybody, you know, the 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 always uh, the always mentioned you know good guy with a gun, which again I still to a certain extent yes I fully believe that people that will- it, it could definitely stop the situation quicker, but it's not like it's not the cure all. And that's why, for, that's why I think it really is important to start del- trying to dig down into what the actual issue is, like really, really striking the root here. Because, like I said, for despite what the gun control people say, it's not the guns, and despite what the the gun advocates say, it's not just the laws. It's just it's not just the government impeding you. It's not just right. like there's so many more things. Like we talked about this a little bit the other night on on the fiends, on the freedom fiends, and. It was actually Lou Fien who brought this up, and I, you know, I, I think it's a really good point that, you know, people people like to blame the video games uh, or like you know the violent culture we live in, but realistically, most people don't want to look at where the real violence is. That that is actually not just cheered, like you know, people want to blame the video games or you know violent sports or whatever, but. And and this to to the uninitiated, this may sound like my bias coming out here, but I've thought about this one a lot, and ever since he said it, and I'm like, you know what? He really is right. Like, what's the what's one of the most glorified things? You know, especially here in the states, like, what's one of the most glorified things to most people? Not us, but to most people, the cops, the military, yep. and those two those two organizations are some of the most violent in the fucking world. Yeah, what what we know as right in society is inherently violent. Yeah. And that's the cult where we are brought up, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure it happens right. in other countries too, but we are brought up here to idolize these people yeah. and they go out and commit acts of violence against innocent people, both the military and the cops. They do this on a daily basis, you know, and they, whether, whether it's the military going around the world and blowing people up, you know, blowing innocent people up or invi- yeah. or invading and occupying a country. And then when the when the when the the people who live there try to fight back, they they're, they're called terrorists and they get mowed down. It's like they're out there and, and this is glorified. This is like, you know, you see you see it, you know, any you watch any of the. The high holy days, as I refer to them, the high holy days of statism. Like you watch any of the parades on Memorial Day or, or you know, what, whatever, all the flag day, all this stuff. You see, like the little kid, like the little kids out there that get brought out there with their families, and they're waving those flags high, and and you know, they all they they all cheer if some military members get up, and everybody stands up and claps. It's like this is what you're taught. This is what this is this is that's you if you want to you know you want to talk about the violent culture we live in. I'm going to agree with you. But I don't think it's for the reasons that most people think. I think a lot of it has to do with this, and and that's where a lot of this stems from. And then when you put, you know, and then when you add to that, you have kids. Well, because a lot of these unfortunately end up happening in schools who are forced. Again, this is where the laws actually do come into play, where they are forced by law to attend these schools. Because if they don't, in a lot of situations, their parents will go to jail. Uh, yeah. So they're literally forced into these situations where they're crammed into these tiny areas with a bunch of other people that they don't know at the beginning. And even if they get to know some of them, all you know, all the same age, all the pressure and all this stuff, it's like, you know. They you, have nowhere to go. Yeah. So when, yeah, when, and when they need to release some steam, man, like, what else do they see around them? You know, this is how we solve problems. Ugh. It's horrible. Yeah. So I, I think you know, I th- I think that has a lot to do with it. I you know, I, I will agree with it. Like I said, I'll agree with the people who just randomly say, "Oh, it's the, it's the violent culture." Yeah, it is. But let's take a look at where that violence is actually concentrated. Like where most people. I mean, sure, football. You know, hockey fights. You know, there's vi- You know, the UFC, whatever, like that type of stuff. There's violence too, and yeah, I'm, I, I, I do believe that that can rub off on some people the wrong yeah. way. You know, like because I can play. Uh, you know, one of my favorite games of uh, of all time to play actual games, I should say, are still the the Grand Theft Auto games. Yeah, you know, where exactly. I get to run around shooting people, beating the crap out of people. You know, really <laughs> violent stuff. 
but I've never done this in my real in my real life, and I never intend to, and I don't think I ever will. There are some people, however, that you know that will affect them. So again, I I think it may be something like that may be part of the problem, but it's not anywhere near the cause of all this stuff. No, you know, I mean, the cause of it is the individual. Yes. That that's just they made a decision and then they carried out the action. There's no one else you can really blame for it. Uh, this goes with, too. They they constantly blame the uh, pharmaceutical industry and all that. And while those help push to those desperate ends, it's still ultimately the individual that is either trapped in that situation or have made choices to lead them to the. Uh, there's there's always it always boils down to. An individual making a decision. You can't control people's minds. And for as long as humans have the ability through any means to be violent, they're going to be. It's always going to happen. The frequency it happens in probably has to do with how how much we even glorify these shootings inadvertently. That's, That's actually why I made that meme the other day with putting the kid on Mad Magazine. It's mad. <laughs> it His is. His pictures all over the news. He is a star. Yeah. Well, and that's funny too because I I do recall a few years back, even like the mainstream media and stuff claiming that they were no longer going to do this stuff. It's you know we're not we're not going to use the name and we're not going to use the picture. And it's like no, you, you never stop because you know it sells because people want that. It's you know people. Well, because we are essentially a vi- violent culture. <laughs> Human, I, you, humans have always been pretty effing violent, man. I mean, they, it was only a couple hundred years ago that there were still public executions on a regular basis that people used to go to and, and actually like, and you know, it was like an event where people would show up in droves and there would actually be people out there selling food and drinks and stuff like that and souvenirs. I mean, let's hope they got the knot right this time. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Oh man, I heard. I, I listened. To, there was a recent, uh, the, the most recent Dan Carlin episode of Hardcore History, uh, which his podcasts uh, are insanely long. So get strapped in if you ever want to listen to those. But they're amazing. He does some great work. But he was talking about all that uh, back in the day and how all this stuff was done. And yeah, it, the fact that most of these public executions, people didn't die the first time. You know, there was messed ups with the hangings. The, talking about, like stories that have been documented about beheadings that took like six seven shots to the head before it was finally chopped off you know and people stood around and watched this stuff and cheered and like yep. and and would boo the executioner for screwing up the job <laughs> i mean humans are a fascinating species man yeah well i mean but like i said that's only a couple hundred years ago and people act like we're so we're, we're this civilized you know that we're so civilized that any act any act of aggression that you know that they don't condone because obviously most of these same people have no problem uh, condoning the actions of the military and the police and stuff like that. Uh, but for for the ones they don't condone, then they can look at it and go, "Oh my God, this person's horrible. This person's violent. It comes from this violence in the culture. We need to get rid of all of this." It's like, do you know not know anything about history? Like, do you not understand human nature how how and how it has progressed in a lot of ways? For the better over over the you know, centuries, and in a lot of ways, we haven't moved very far at all. <laughs> right, in some ways, but if you actually look at the 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 global scale, violence and war and famine and uh, sickness and all of that are pretty much at its lowest point in human history. Well, that's thanks to technology, I I, I think, but yeah, and just. Uh, yeah, basically, technology and just our population size, there's going to be a bigger frequency based on our population density. Yeah. It's just a matter of how many standard deviations away from the norm it can get. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's going to happen. You can't plan for it. It's it's uh until we create a culture that can not foster these situations where one does have to choose violence as a matter of, in their own head, survival. Because um, that's that's kind of what's hardwired into us, is we are violent for survival. That is how we survived as a species. 
the ones that could be the most violent, the ones that could kill the most, the ones that could, they survived. Yeah. That is that 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 is kind of the way things have played out, despite what other people, some people would want to believe. You know, that's why I that's why I, I say a lot of times, despite despite the fact that people want to believe, you know, in regards to morality and all that stuff, it's like, well, unfortunately, the history of the world says that might actually does make right, at least in reality. You know, right. and that's kind of the way it's always worked, and it still works to a large extent today. Would I prefer that it didn't? Yes, obviously. But we got but a long way to go to get to that if we can't even. You know, if people can't even come to an understanding that the things they're fighting about in the present are not as far removed from this, like what they believe to be this distant past, you know, because again, that, that goes back to the the whole mindset everybody has and everybody, uh, what, what I mentioned earlier, despite being in the information age, people aren't taking advantage of it because yeah. they're just, they're, they're not, they're, they're getting the, bit, the little bits of, of information that they want to get. That can for, that can you know contort to their biases. Okay, that's what I want to pull in, or you know that's what I want to just read and say. Okay, well of course this it's it's the other side, so this this must be true because it says they did something bad. So of course that's the case, and it's just so much easier to live like like for that for them, but and have no recognition that you know this great leap you think we've made in human uh, like civilization in the past couple hundred years. You're missing a lot of what's at, what's changed and what hasn't changed, and you're also really ignorant of the fact that that little blip is so insignificant in the timeline of just not even to the planet, just people. You know, like you, you got you got to go a little further back, like you, the attention spans. I, I refer to it as the goldfish mentality all the time because that's just so many people act like they just they can't they think can't, they can't think past three months. Yeah. Three, three weeks a lot of times with people. I mean, I, I know I get like that sometimes, but I smoke a little too much weed, so, you know, that happens. But <laughs> Yeah, but on, well, on a whole. I mean, it, it has, it, no one's even talking about the Super Bowl anymore. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> and in another month, they're not going to be talking about this either. Nope. Something else is going to come up, whether it's something that... What, if the, the only way that it will be still be talked about in a month or so is if the the government drags its feet in finding something to d redirect the focus on because that's always the way it works i mean it's I, and i'm not saying i'm not i'm not pulling my my tinfoil hat out and saying oh the government you know government's going to create a false flag to get the get the attention off of this false flag it's like no 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 they're yeah. they're they're great at taking advantage people who work for government have mastered the art of taking advantage they're opportunists so they yep. wait for this situation to present itself they don't have to create it they just have to wait for it to happen because it will they just they, they can even they can push it if they want to because people will again they constantly seek to confirm their bias. The government knows this, the agencies know this. They they put out this info to push you in that direction to make you look crazy. They push you in the direction to be radicalized. They push you in and then they capitalize on it later. Yeah. They didn't do anything. Yeah. They didn't have to. Well, yeah, well, they they chose to. Well, I mean, e e even even as we haven't removed ourselves from this situation yet, look how easy it was to get the conversation shifted slightly. By tr all, all Trump had to do was come out and say, you know, all it had to do, all Trump had to be. Uh, I don't know if he actually said it or they somebody they heard him say it or whatever, but that he actually you know went to sessions and said the thing about the bump stocks. He wants he wants to try to get them banned. <laughs> that, that's that's all that had to be said. He didn't yep. put a law into effect. It's not like all of a sudden these things are illegal. Like all it took was just to throw that out there, and now the conversation has started to shift because now all the people are the right, the right, the people on the right side for the most part, the the right wingers and stuff, and the and the gun the gun people are all freaking out and going, see, oh, 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 they're 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 doing it again. They're coming after the guns. And, it's happening. Yep, you know and. <laughs> I mean, I, I know that the long-term plan of any government is always to try to disarm their populace as much as possible because, well, that's, that's, it's out of survival. That's how they survive. Yep. Um, but as I've said in, in plenty of other arenas, I really, I really do believe, as much as I believe that, that the people that work for government 
a lot of times are largely incompetent. Um, they do. They. They. Ha- I. I do have to admit that the the United States government, I truly believe, is probably one of the most sinister ever. Only because they learned from the mistakes of so many other nation states over the past couple hundred years and watched so many people try to rise to power and uh, you know and 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 take over the country right away and how badly that usually ends for them. <laughs> and they're just like, eh, we'll take the long route. And we'll just yep. kind of like, you know, slowly drag things. So I don't really expect these all these things to be made illegal right away. But all it takes is just for them to throw it out there. And it would be the same thing. It was the same thing with Obama. Even if he didn't do things during his thing, all he had to do was come out and say it. And it shifts the conversation just enough to keep people off balance and keep, like you said, like we said, you know, keep confirming their biases. Yep. Be- because it's just, you know, it, it has to be the those Republicans. Little, those little bits of uh, what serotonin and... All that just keep feeding their feeding their reward response in their brain and keep them keep them distracted. They won't change anything. It's it's a, it's a, it's a, in a way I kind of admire it. The ability, the just the way people. I don't know. I, I'm still learning to take advantage of it in in my own work. I want to basically shift the tide uh, in getting people to think by basically taking these little bits of information. This is how I title things to go to go back is take the outlandish claim or whatever make that basically the title get that that thing that people are like oh i'm gonna click that and then start out confirming it and then flip it and it jars them in such a way that now they're actually forced in this little uncomfortable space where they have to think about it and i i get one of two responses i either get wow thank you or you're a fucking idiot. Fuck you. <laughs> and as long as I can be in that place, I'm happy. Because that means that's getting people to talk because the comment sections blow up. People start talking. I don't even have to do research at that point. I'll just make an outlandish claim and people will start dropping links for me. And then I can go through that and sort the cream from the shit. And it's just <laughs> like, wow, I don't have to do the work. You guys did it for me. Fantastic. Yeah, what's well, the there's there's the one quote I've seen I've actually seen it around a lot recently. But what is it? Uh, yeah, the but the best way to get the, to get the right answer is the purpo- is to throw out the wrong answer and just wait because <laughs> everybody will come to you with it with answers, you know. So yeah, that, that's actually that's actually a pretty brilliant strategy, <laughs> and it is it is a it is an easy way to take advantage of that because yeah, people will and I've I've seen it too. I've seen where people react like that, and you know that's good though. It it is good because. You know, I've dealt with that in my own things. You know, one of the, I mean, I usually do all these different shows and stuff, but we we don't necessarily get too controversial. But like one of the recent Lulberts we did a while, a couple of weeks ago, we did the truth about Adam Gokesh and <laughs> we just slammed the ever living shit out of him. And Jim, Jim Jesus is amazing. And he had like, he had all the, ev- like he had all the links and we have provided all the evidence. And it was the same thing. We got the same two results. Either, wow, thank you for, for thank you for providing this or you're an idiot. You're a shill. You're like, and you, like, you can just tell the people that either didn't read it at all, or didn't didn't listen to the podcast, or 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 or, or any read any of the follow up links that we provided to check the evidence themselves, you know. Uh, and the one the ones who reacted differently, those are the ones who are actually thinking. And yep. you know, for me, I, I guess I'm you know I'm I'm kind of in a similar boat because those are the type of people I want to reach. I, I don't care what I don't care what your I, I don't care what your ideology is I don't care what you currently ascribe to I don't care what you I don't even care necessarily what you believe to a large extent as long as you're willing to think that means you're in you know that that puts you in actual intellectual status where most people who are considered intellectuals are not yeah. because in order to be an intellectual you just have to keep an open mind and you have to keep bringing in information and filtering it to the best of your ability but never being so sure of yourself that you're not willing to challenge those ideas that you've already come to believe are true. And there, you know, that that's in short supply, unfortunately, because there's so many people that are wrapped up on this, uh, you know, the divide, whether you want to call it the divide and conquer or whatever, like just this yeah. war, this, this war of, it's not even a war, it's not even a war of ideas because they're not really throwing, like I said, they're just, they're, it's basically a war of monkey poo. That's what it yeah. fucking is. It's a war of monkey poo. They're fucking throwing <laughs> shit back and forth at each other in loud voices. That's Pretty it. Much. It's amazing. And and you know what? Part of that can be really entertaining. And part of it can be 
productive if it drives certain people to look at things. I mean, I try to remain calm as much as possible in conversations with people and I will egg them on and I will see how far they can go. And it's not so much for that person. If, if someone's flinging poo, I love to keep, keep them going. Basically, not even trolling them, but just keep going just enough. And then other people see how freaking crazy that guy took those ideas and then they start to question their own bias. Everybody else on the outside. Sure. Um, but it, in a way, that, I guess that's manipulative. But it is. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I can't. I can't fault you for it. I've 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 engaged in the same tactics for a year. You know, I, I used to talk about when, when I actually did spend a lot of time on Facebook, which I tried not to do anymore. Uh, you know, that was one of my tactics I used all the time. I would draw people out into day long conversations. Yep. On 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 the uh, you know especially on the Seize the Liberty page. Where I would just draw these people out and let them say some of the most outlandish shit, but just exactly, I would remain calm. I would, you know, I wouldn't call them names. I would like, I would just, you know, keep asking them questions and just wait because it was never about them. It was always about everybody else. You know, yep. the same, the same thing happened last year when, uh, when I went through all my shit, when I, you know, when I, when I made that post that made everybody so mad and then, uh, then I got arrested after the fact, the, uh, even even on my post, my viral post that you know had so much hatred directed at me, there was quite a few people who just came to read and saw the insane reaction to me, and actually had their mind changed on a lot of things. Yeah, you know, some of them came to me personally. Some of them went to other people, uh, you know, friends of mine, and started conversations and started to say, you know, once they actually were calm and and weren't like all emotional about what they thought I had said. They uh, they're like, hmm, these ideas are actually interesting. Yeah, you know, which is which was which was the impetus for a lot of this for me trying to shift things uh, in this direction where I am more focused, where I don't care about. You know, I, I always said I don't want to be part of an echo chamber, but I always, you know, I ended up in a lot of them anyway. It just seems to kind of happen if you're not careful enough. Uh, but I I really have been trying to focus more on talking to people outside of those chambers because it doesn't serve me. Any, it do, it doesn't do me any good except for. The, my, except the dopamine hits of right. the the adulation I get from inside the echo chambers for whatever I whatever content I put out or for whatever you know funny thing I you know write or like if if I make a comment or or you know respond to somebody or whatever like that's all it is. It's yeah. not it's I mean, not I, it's not furthering the cause not not it's it's not even a, like I was about to say the furthering the cause of freedom which I know could be kind of cliche or whatever but it's not even furthering the cause of my own freedom. Right, it's just for shits and giggles. Exactly. Sometimes. And that's totally fine. That that's gonna be there. It that's just part of it. Well, yeah, you need you need that obviously. But I'm saying like that's where a lot of people get stuck, and they kind of yep. that's where most of their energy gets focused, and then then they're not out actually having conversations because even within our own circles, where you know. The anarchists and libertarians, these type of people, are supposed to be the smarter ones. They're supposed to be the more logical ones. They're supposed to be the ones who not get caught up in this stupid bullshit. But they all still do, or most of them do at least. And yeah. it doesn't get anywhere because they're just they're 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 basically just jacking themselves off um, in their little circle jerks and cheering each other on and going, "Hey, we, you know, we we've, we've solved these problems in our head." It's like, okay, but what about in the real world? No, you're doing the same things that we've been talking about this whole time. Just your biases, you get your bias confirmed by reading stuff about the horrible leftists or whatever it is, whatever your whatever whoever your particular enemy is, you get that bias confirmed, you run out and you speak on it, you write on it, you podcast on it, whatever, without actually examining the situation and then now you're no better than the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, everybody's in the same shithole. Yeah. So, well, like I said, that uh, originally, that's why we definitely got to get to... Uh, you know, getting back to our conversation about the guns, we really need to get to the, uh, you know, well, I think having conversations is really the only way we can go about this because, you know. Right. Well, I mean, we can't just go out there and constantly monitor people and, uh, do you feel like shooting people today, sir? Huh. Like, that's not really going to work. I mean, look, at the, the kid that did this Florida shooting was reported a million times. And... Uh, a lot of people are going to, well, they do blame the FBI for not following through on the lead. Um, yeah. That, that is part of the conspiracy that makes me go, hmm. 
But then I think back to going to the DMV to get my new license and I realized that, okay, yeah, maybe they didn't follow up on the lead, but they might have even just missed it. Like, how many reports a day do they get? How many, how much crap do they have to go through? Like, it's very easy to miss something. Oh, it's extremely easy. Especially with all the amounts of reportings and all sorts of crap to sort it's it's absolutely daunting so i find that a funny argument from the anarchists as well it's like well the fbi should have stopped it and it's like well in order for the fbi to have the resources to stop it you're saying that they need more funding (laughs) damn it (laughs) yeah it it puts it puts a lot of people in a very tough position that they a a lot of people seem like they don't actually want to deal with the the facts of, of, of stuff like that it's like yes it, it was the report i think it was 20 i think there was something like 20 times the kid was reported or something like that at least he was arrested like 36 times in six years or so, i forget what it was yeah. i mean what, what and, but the funny thing is if you know most of the people who actually are, are making that argument who aren't anarchists uh don't don't recognize the problem either of course because they're 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 pointing out the failure of the system and it's like well, yeah, that's why a lot of us over here are against the system in general because it just makes these things worse. Work. But you know, I mean, this this the, the whole fact that they can't find anything or they can, you know they miss things like this. I mean, this was proven out during the Boston Marathon bombing, where uh, you know si- same situation. They had actually had somebody they had been had their eyes on that the those those boys for uh, for other reasons and stuff like that, and they just let it go because well. What is government doing? They're trying to collect information on everybody, and it's impossible to sh- to sift through that. And then when you add in this particular situation, it's not even just the the information that they're trying to collect that they have to sift through. Now now they're adding, like you said, the act the calls they're getting from the public on top of that. And if the prime directive this entire time has been to spy on everybody as clearly has been the case for a very long time, you know, well before the Snowden revelations, because the NSA was was up and running well before Snowden came along. And, I mean, look how the FBI, you know, went back in the the, the, the Hoover days of the FBI. I mean, they, he, was spy, he was spying on everybody, you know? <laughs> so, yep. like, this isn't new. So they've always been about this aspect of it. So, of course, the calls from the public are never going to be a priority. No. So is it a failing of the system? Absolutely. So that's why we should focus on that too and say, well, we need maybe we need to fix the sit, maybe we need to get rid of the system, put a new one in place. But that even then, that still doesn't solve the problem of why these particular instances happen. What what can be done about this? And you know, like you said at the beginning, it's not about you know you can't pass a law. And you said in, your, in the piece you wrote too, it's not about passing a law to ban things, and it's not about pass or either passing or repealing laws to give back things. Right. Those are in either direction. It's only a small piece of the puzzle, or a you know a, a, a small. Well, actually, getting rid of the guns is a bigger problem for other issues. But but in this regard, it's not it's not fixing. It's not it, neither one fixes anything. Fixes anything. Correct. It, it has the potential to change things, but we got to get to the root. And, and the root is I, I like I said I really believe it's the the culture of violence that's glorified. Uh, you know, and, and, and I do, I've, like I said, I was started to say before, I, I do, I've walked back some of my statements from years ago. Uh, you know, I do believe where, where I used to think that the people who met, even mentioned video games or the violence and sports or whatever, were just, you know, basically for, you know, pussies, essentially, it's like, oh, well, you know, whatever. No, I, 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 I now recognize the older I've gotten, I realize, yeah, that can affect certain people in really bad ways. Just because it doesn't affect me, just because I can watch it and I can do crazy things like beat the Avril Van Hell out of everybody and, you know, go shoot hookers and stuff in, in, in Grand <laughs> Theft Auto, but then not do it in public, doesn't mean not everybody can, you know? Right. Some people have a hard time separating reality from fiction. Yeah. And that's just part of the human condition. Yeah. It, it's one of those things you're going to have to face. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. You're going to ban books. There's plenty of books that talk about violence. Look at freaking Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> well, that, which we could we could do a whole another episode of that one. That's just insane. <laughs> that, that the glor the glorification. I've never read it, but from what I've heard, <laughs> it's essentially the glorification of a very abusive relationship. <laughs> yeah, uh, and people love it. Yeah, and 
fucked up. Uh, yeah, because we're a we are a sick fucking species. It's it's really you know I mean like I said there, we, there's so many different paths we could take. I I, I don't want to keep I don't want to keep going all night with that because we could take it on a whole bunch of different paths. But there's so many things that people just whether it's the violence. Uh, that people think that we've evolved past, that they're so shocked when these things still happen. Um, or even, you know, even stuff like, you know, when, whenever like the pedophilia stuff comes up or whatever, like any of the things that's been going on, stuff like it's like, again, people that are ignorant, uh, people that are ignorant of history might bother, which is most people. Which we, which is probably explains a lot. That's why that's why I pretty much hate everybody because that's the that's the one thing that bothers me the most is people that are ignorant of history. It's just like, okay. You have these conversations and you have these ideas and you've built these ideologies, your own personal ones or other ones that you've glommed onto or whatever, like based on, you know, like you, like we were saying, the, this short, ridiculously short attention span. Because so many people fail to take into account that not only have we pretty much always been a very violent species, and that's just been proved out through history time and time and time again. And yes, you you mentioned it before. You're right. I mean, there was a, there was a book by uh, Stephen Pinker, The uh, Better Nature of Our Angels, or something along those lines. Uh, psychologist who I actually heard on the Rogan show recently. Really smart guy. I don't know. He's a he's a pretty hardcore leftist. I don't necessarily agree with him on everything. But is, is he know, the worst guy? He's like a language possibly he just i know he wrote this book like he actually studied he was the one who went out and st- like researched a whole bunch of stuff and came to the conclusion that yeah we're not very vi- we're not anywhere near as violent as people think we are like violence is on the downtick and has yeah. been for years and uh, to a large extent it's true but unfortunately there's still the glorification of all this other type of violence which if not tempered the right way and i'm not saying that and i don't mean that by being control like control but like where people are more aware of what they're actually cheering for essentially like like that that's still there which means the potential for these things to keep happening is always there and even i think even more so now than it would be in a freer society if we got rid of some of these other other exacerbating issues like the schools you know, I, I do, but like I said, do I think, I no longer think that getting rid of the gun free zones are the answer, but I think it's part of the answer, you know? So yeah. even if we're going to live in this, if we, if we're going to be stuck in the current paradigm and not be in a free society and there's going to be public schools, well, okay, that's one step you could take. And as crazy as it may sound to somebody like you were talking about earlier, not every teacher is going to want to carry a gun and maybe in every school, maybe only one of them has to. It's, right. In in that aspect, that is where the pe- the pro gun people are correct on that argument. That all it takes is the the idea in a lot of these people's heads, not all of them, because like you said, like the guys who walked into the bank the bank knowing full well that there's pro- there's a good chance there's an armed guard there, whatever. Other people could be doing could be carrying or whatever. Like they they knew they were going to die. There's always going to be those people, yep. but a lot of these other people, yeah, they definitely do go where they know they have the potential to rack up the numbers before they finally get killed. Like most of them walk into it assuming they're going to get killed. Uh, but they... they I love Vegas. Yeah. So they, they, you know, they, they know that. But yep. it's... The, so at least giving, at least, uh, giving them the, the thought, making them think, well, okay, this isn't a gun, uh, gun-free zone anymore. Somebody could be. You know, it may not cause hesitation for some of the people, but for other ones, that hesitation may be enough to save a whole crap load of lives, you know? Yeah. So I do think that is a positive thing. Uh, I actually read, I read a meta study, a uh, quasi meta study. It was basically independently done. It was an anarchist that did it too. Uh, and he looked at the mass shootings in history and broke down the definitions and, and watered it down to a point where he could analyze what was, what was the most effective way to stop a mass shooting while it was in progress. And what he found surprised him because it wasn't, a good guy with a gun. What it was, was the person standing closest to the shooter who had the balls to tackle him. Hmm. Number one stopper of mass shootings was a bystander tackling the attacker. It makes sense. You don't need a gun. You just need to have the balls to do something about it. And generally, our, our whole society is kind of afflicted by this bystander effect where there's so many people in an area something bad's happening they automatically assume someone else is going to do something about it 
so they don't act. Yeah. If one person just decided that today's not the day I'm going to die, motherfucker, and just tackled the shooter, there would have been other people that jumped on top. Sure, people would have gotten shot. Sure, you might have gotten hurt. But that could have ended a hell of a lot quicker, and you wouldn't have needed a gun. Yeah. But true. they have this fear. They have this fear, and they have this, uh, I guess, view of someone with a gun as authority that you can see they all cower. Yeah. They realize they have the power to just say no and do something about it. And that's not that's not victim blaming. That's it's a natural. Yeah, I'm scared. But if they were more aware of the power of guns and the limitations of guns, uh, they might they might be more effective in stopping these things. So I I think I think training kids to take action in crisis events or in stressful environments or where they see something that's going wrong, teaching them to have the balls to stand up and do something is going to be our best bet because they're going to be looking out for the signs. They're going to be reading body language. They're going to see when people are uncomfortable and they're not going to be that quiet. They're not going to sit to themselves and keep it to themselves. They're going to have the courage to act, either act when something bad is happening or act to be that person that communicates with them and helps them with their problems before they escalate. That's a really good point. You know, when when you first started to say that, I started to think, because, you know, I'm a father, and, like, obviously I would never want my kids to be in that type of situation to have to make that decision. But the more, as you kept talking, the more I thought about it, I'm like, well, yeah, I mean... Maybe not having classes like for these specific things like that may freak the idea that may freak some people out. But if you think about if you sit and think about it for if you try to remove the emotion from it for a second, just try to think about it objectively. Isn't that I mean, what you just said, I mean, I'm kind of asking a question to the audience, I guess. Doesn't that at least sound like a better option than training them to get under the desk and hide is what they currently do? You know, try to lock. Teacher tries to run and lock the door, and everybody, you know, either everybody either pile into the bathroom, which which makes you even more of a sitting, you know, a, you know, fish in a barrel, uh, you know, because you're now you're all crammed in this tiny little area, and all it takes is the guy opening the door, and now you're all got, you know, instead of being spread out over a bigger room, or just get under the desk like they used to teach people to do in the event of a nuclear disaster, like you know the ridiculous things they had people do. It's like, yeah, it's not going to do anything, um, yeah. you know. While like I said, while it may se- seem unconventional to me. Training them, training the kids to be more aware, definitely seems like a, mu- a step in, in, a, in a much better, bigger a step in the right direction rather than teaching them to cower and run. You right. know, because there's power in numbers, and uh, I mean, they even even the police are trained that basically once someone with a knife gets within twenty feet, even if you have your gun, you're in a tight spot. They have that twenty foot rule. There's a reason for that, as much as I don't necessarily like the use of force by police but there is some logic to that if you can be quick enough a gun's not going to be effective yeah um and and i think that's what really we should be driving there actually is a uh organization that trains people to be heroes i'm actually looking for it but i saw it on an episode of vsauce i don't know if you watch vsauce no i I haven't but that's that's, Uh, they have a youtube red special uh called minefield and one of the episodes talks about the bystander effect and that experiment with the uh, train on the tracks and it's going to split and do you pull the switch and kill one person oh, or the, tr- the trolley problem yeah the trolley problem yeah they actually set up an experiment for that uh, and part of the whole episode they have this how to be a hero thing mm-hmm. and they, they test these kids in these situations and they actually found that the training is really effective and to get people to speak out about injustice to get up and do something about it and that's what they're really um, trying to do. And it's, it's effective and it's a different method than just, you know, proliferating guns or trying to take all the guns or it's teaching people how to act, how to take control, how to basically be a hero. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, you you mentioned the whole thing with the fear and stuff. I mean, obviously, yeah, and, and it, it's it you know it's it's not victim blaming because it, it's in it's innate in most people because it's part of self preservation. Like your reaction, especially 
especially if you're somebody who doesn't have much experience with guns, it's definitely going to be a extremely natural reaction to duck cover, like want to run away and hot, like get away from that as quickly as possible because you're not really sure of exactly what can happen, how fast, whatever. You know, you may have just heard the stories or whatnot. So yeah, that that's definitely the the the, the reaction of most people. But like you said, all it takes is that one. It just takes somebody and. You know, whether, you know, it, it, do, it will take some courage, but whether it's a situation that, you know, you think that you can prevent other people from dying or, I mean, you saw this in the stories of, on what happened in 9-11, like the one, the, the reason the yep. one plane went down in Pennsylvania is because some, some people, everybody was scared for, everybody was petrified. One person decided to act and everyone else stood behind them. Well, yeah, because th- that one that- person said, said, said no. to themselves in that moment, well, that, they said to themselves in that moment, I know I'm going to die. We're all going to die here. But right. at the very least, I can try to prevent other people from dying by stopping the plane before it could crash into any, you know, before it could crash into its destination. You know, like so yes, it may in those situations, it might, you know, for some people it might be even easier to say, "Well, I'm going to die anyway. I might as well go for it." But unfortunately, because of the fear so many people are paralyzed with, most of the people didn't. If that one guy didn't take that step, no that, one would that plane would have ended up where it was meant to go. Yep. You know, and you know that that's why to this day I one of probably still probably my favorite quote of all time is uh, the Mark Twain one about the Patriot. You know about how uh, in the beginning in the beginning of change uh, in the begin what is it in the beginning of change uh, the pa- the Patriot is scarce or whatever yada 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 I'm always gonna screw it up I always paraphrase it and start screw it up but yeah that one um, because it's true it really does take that one person to stand up. And in, in any situation, whether it's I'm not going to take this anymore or I'm going to make sure nobody else gets hurt. And, you know, you don't have to do much. But again, it, that's all of this starts with communication. It starts with people being able to talk to each other and then people being able to, especially when we're talking about in the school settings, people be, being willing to talk to not just children in general, but even a lot of people, their own children in a more not so childish way. You know, I think, I think a lot of people don't give their kids enough credit. And unfortunately that gets, that also gets exacerbated in the school system. And that's where you end up with the entitled mentalities. But if people were a little more, you know, I try to, you know, I, I've ever since they were super little, I've always talked to my kids. Like I would talk to anybody else, you know, and some people think that's weird, but I'm right. like, why wouldn't I? They're a what sponge. You, right. right? They're, yeah. They're, I'm trying to prepare them for the real world and they're a sponge right now. So if I can communicate them and they can start to un- these, understand these ideas earlier, you know, I'm also somebody who, who's who's t- t- taught my kids self defense at a very early age. You know, I had to do it unfortunately because my one daughter likes to pick on the other one, and I had to teach the little one how to throw a punch so she wouldn't get beat up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then they both took karate for a little bit, and they kind of, and they dug it. And it's like, you know, some people, all the st- even stuff like that, this freaks some people out because they think they have to protect the children. They have to you know baby them and stuff like that. It's like, nah, man. It's them to protect themselves. Why not prepare them for? not a perfect world yeah that i think that's i think i think that really that's the solution for now yeah i think that's uh i I think that's actually pretty much all we well i mean like we've been saying this whole time there's stuff we can do there are things that'll there are things that can be changed things that even have been suggested already by other people like yeah some of these things will help in certain matters but yeah when it comes down to it I think you're right, man. I think the best thing we could do is is stop preparing the kid, pre- stop preparing your kids for the world you want them to have. I mean, yeah, give them those ideas, right? But, uh, but also prep them for the world they actually live in, <laughs> the one we, yeah. the one we currently inhabit. Because I mean, I I want to see a, a, a shinier, happier world, just like just like most other people. You know, I'm all for that, but I know we ain't there yet. <laughs> yep. <sighs> All right. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say on that note, we should probably get wrapping up the show. Yeah. Um, I, you have anything else you want to say in closing before we get out of here, man? Uh, if you like the design behind me, radical abolitionist and individual anarchist, I have a link in the description to go to agora.threadless.com. That would be fantastic. I, but, I I own a couple of those shirts and they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. So make sure you uh, check out the other links. I have links to the Seeds of Liberty. And uh, Abolitionist J, obviously, okay. Jeremy. That's me. Uh, on Steam It and the link to the SOL webpage. All right. Go check those out. Cool. See more like this. Yeah. 
Well, uh, well, and as for my show, then yeah. So thank you everybody for listening. Uh, thanks, Bode, man. Thanks for coming on. This was uh, well, it was tech- the technical experience was a pain in the butt in the beginning, but uh, I'm glad I'm glad we were able to do this because uh, yeah, you know, awesome. as as with anything, I don't know if we actually solved anything, but we had a conversation, and I think I I I believe at least from what I'm used to hearing, I think we're at least putting out ideas that aren't getting talked about as much as they could be. So if if at all, so. For me, that that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this show these days. Anyway, I'm trying to bring people on to have conversations, to just get ideas flowing, and ha- and and people that I disagree with too. You know, just like yeah, let's 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 do this, man. Let's actually keep talking instead of talking at each other. Stop confirming your biases, and uh, you know, open up a little bit, man. Yeah. I'm oh, and, and and since I never we we never managed to get to it during the show, but I really was I really wanted to use it for the show title, so I'm gonna have to get it out there. Uh, of all the solutions you could possibly look for when it comes to the gun control debate in one center in in in, um, in this particular instance, the one thing I do have to say is fuck the NRA. Uh, <laughs> they are not they are not your friend or the solution either. So let's just I I'm with you. That that'll probably surprise anybody who listen who catches this who ha- actually is on the gun control side. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Fuck the NRA. Right, but uh, for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, man. Once again, thanks, Bo. This has been great. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has uh, been an experience. Hopefully, we'll be able to do some more of these live episodes in the future. And for everybody else, uh, thank you. Uh, all of my information, as always, can be found at solpodcast.org. And we'll catch you next time. Peace, love, voluntary interactions for all. Peace. All right. Sweet. Cool. Awesome. That was really good.